Here we are, folks. Jason back with you to show you what we can do with interesting glass effects in Photoshop. So I've got this water bottle, and I also have this shattered glass from a bullet hole, and then I've got this kind of glass explosion coming out. What I want to do is I want to put these all together in kind of a dramatic effect of the hole in the water bottle, and this glass kind of coming out at you. I'm going to come over to my bullet hole, and I'm going to do select all, command A. I'm going to copy this, jump back to my original image, and paste that in. And this is going to be the bullet hole, the shattered glass. I'm going to set this to multiply because this was shot on a white background. So it's going to make that nice and transparent going through. I'm going to turn this into a smart object by right clicking on the layer and choosing smart object. That way I can scale this up and down without destroying the quality of the image. Do my command T for transform. Hold down the shift so I scale that proportionately and get my shattered glass. On my water bottle layer, I'm going to select that and I'm going to add a layer mask to that. I'm going to go back to the bullet layer and I'm going to grab my quick selection tool. And from that, I'm going to do a quick select inside that hole because obviously the hole would be going through the bottle. Jumping back to my water bottle layer and selecting my layer mask, I'm going to make sure black is in the foreground. And with this selection, I'm going to Option Delete or Alt Delete and fill that hole with black to make it look like it's going through. Then Command D for Deselect to turn off my selection. Okay, there it is. Great. That's pretty simple. But let's jump over to this. I'm going to do a Command A to select all, and I'm going to copy this, jump back to my original here, and I'm going to paste this in, and this is my shattered glass. Now, this is going to take a little bit of time to be able to work through this, but what I want to do is I want to make this translucent. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to double click on my shattered glass layer, use my Blend If command to slide this off so anything that's white is going to start to become translucent. And then I'm going to hold down my Option key and I'm going to kind of slide that out and keep sliding that until those areas out here start to become a little bit more translucent. Now you can see we still have a little bit of um, detail inside here and that's fine because we're probably going to mask that out along the edge there because I don't want to have partial pieces of glass, but it's not a huge concern at this, okay? So with this, I want to right click and convert this to a smart object so those uh, pixels actually appear transparent and I can see that shattered background there. Grab my move tool and I'm going to kind of position this where I'd like to have this object being shattered, okay? Now if you want a really dramatic effect, I could go in and do a Command J and duplicate that layer. Do my Command T for transform. And I could rotate this as well. And I could kind of make this larger to create a very dramatic glass effect here with lots of glass. Okay? And this may be overkill, but we're going to mask out a lot of this too. And it just, I can always go back into my smart objects here and edit these. In fact, I'm going to select both of these, click on one, shift click on the other, and I'm going to convert these to a smart object so this just becomes one object to work with right here. Okay. Now, I've got this and I see that there's a lot of glass going on here, but what I'd like to do is I want to bring this in so that I get more of a dramatic effect. I want to create a funnel effect so that it's coming out of here. So with this shattered glass smart object, I'm going to go under my filter menu and I'm going to choose Liquify. And in the Liquify menu, what I want to do is I want to use my Pucker and Bloat. I know, something that you can actually use Pucker and Bloat for. So if I use my Pucker tool, I'm going to create a very large brush, and I've got like a 6,000 pixel brush. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to use my Pucker tool to suck that glass in toward the center. Okay, so this is going to give me a dramatic kind of funnel effect coming in and bringing that around. Next, I'm going to go to my Bloat tool. In my Bloat, I'm going to come out to the outside here, and I can just kind of hit the Bloat, and that's going to kind of make it a little bit bigger. The Bloat's very specific, so I don't, you know, I want to just come over here and 
do the edges and you can see that it just kind of makes it bigger as well. I can also use my forward warp tool and I can also pull those as well to kind of create more of a dramatic funnel effect coming out toward the edge. And it doesn't hurt to do this, you know, right off the edge here to kind of give um, myself a little bit more working area with this glass effect. It's very dramatic. And you don't have to worry too much about really distorting this glass because in the end what's going to happen is we're going to mask a lot of this edges out. So I don't have to worry about those edges that are not completely transparent or also making this glass look, you know, like it's slightly distorted. All right. So there I've got that. I'm going to click OK. Now this is very memory intensive and um, so <laughs> you may run out of memory when you're doing this. All right. So there's my glass effect with a much more dramatic impact here. Now what I want to do is I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to fill this entire layer with black or I'm a new layer mask. I'm sorry, not a new layer, but a layer mask. So I'm going to choose black as my foreground color. I'm going to use Option or Alt Delete to fill my entire mask with black. Now I'm going to grab my brush and I'm just going to do a soft round brush. I'm just right clicking with my brush on my document. And on my mask window, I'm going to choose white. And I want to hold down my control and option to get a very large, very soft brush. And in my mask, I'm going to choose that very large soft brush and I'm going to paint with white on my mask. And I'm going to hit that several times to basically form a very large window in my mask to show this through. And I may go ahead and click in different areas here. And again, this is pretty intensive because I've got a lot going on with this, okay? And I could have gone in and just done a selection on my mask, but I'm using my brush to kind of create this effect. Now, I didn't pay much attention to the hard edges that I had at the edge of my smart object here, and that's because what I'm going to do next is going to be pretty cool. I'm going to jump back over to my glass that I had right here. What I want to do is I want to desaturate this and I just want to go in and get just a black and white image. In fact, I'm just going to go under the image menu and I'm just going to switch this over to grayscale. Now, I don't usually convert something to grayscale using this method here, but in this case, I'm going to turn this into a brush. So I'm not overly concerned about making sure I get the best tonal range. I'm going to do a levels on this background here. So I'm just going to do my command L. And I'm going to high bump up the highlights here because I want to overdrive the whites to make the background translucent. And I'm going to really saturate the darks here to get a lot of dramatic effect. OK, and I'm not so concerned about losing detail in this because once you see what I'm going to do with this brush, this will make a lot more sense. So, yeah, I don't have a lot of the really shortened up the tonal range here, but that's fine. Now, I want to turn this into a brush. And if I go and I select everything doing a command A and I go under edit here, you'll find the brush preset isn't working. And the reason why is this particular image is just too big. There's too much to capture as a brush. So I'm going to go under image size here and I'm going to cut the size of this down substantially. OK, so I don't need a brush that's, you know, seven feet across and three feet high. I'm just going to break this down into basically a much smaller image. In fact, I'm going to do like six inches. OK. And this is going to be high res, so I need a much smaller area here to define the brush. I'm going to do select all, command A, and then when I go back under my edit menu, you see that the define pre brush preset is active. You can only capture so much in a brush, and even then this brush is going to be very large. So with my selection around my grayscale image, I'm going to choose define brush preset, and it's going to, I've already uh, named this, so it's going to come in and this is an 1800 pixel brush. It's about 1800 pixels wide, which is huge. OK, now let's jump back to my image and you're going to grab your brush, right click and go down to the very bottom because you're going to get whenever you create a brush, it's always going to be at the bottom of your brush panel. So the brush shows up as the broken glass. Now, what's cool with this is we could paint with this, but I'm not going to paint with this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my mask and I'm going to grab my eraser tool and my eraser. I'm going to choose that glass brush that I chose that I created as my eraser. I'm going to use my right bracket to increase it 
And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to rotate this around so that I'm going to actually erase on my mask. And I can erase on my mask here, or I can use my brush tool, and I can paint on my mask in black. In fact, probably should paint with black on the mask. Black conceals, white reveals. And then I'm going to rotate this around using the right bracket to make my brush larger, left bracket to make it smaller. I'm going to take my glass brush that I've created and I'm going to increase it so that it kind of matches the size of my glass shards here. But remember, I'm painting on my mask in black, which is going to hide. And when I do that, and I constantly rotate this brush here to different angles here, as I rotate this, I can go around my, um, my uh, mask here and I can paint, which further creates this distressed and broken glass effect here. And I can never get this angle right because I can't go in and do this. So as I go in and I apply this kind of mask brush here, I can hit those areas to further create that mask effect, which is really pretty awesome. And I'm going to do this, keep changing. You can change the size of the brush and you can change the angle as well to go in and create this awesome mask effect. As you get closer to the edge, you can cut down the opacity of the brush too, so you don't get much more of that broken glass effect. If you want that full broken glass effect, you can do that, as well as going in and, of course, adjusting your brush larger and smaller too. So right now it's at 5,000, which is the max size of the brush that I can get, and can go in and hit those areas again to do that. Now, I've got that kind of shattered effect really happening dramatically, and that's all on my mask right here. So here's another cool trick, okay? If I'd like to now take my mask and create that funnel effect so that I don't just have kind of like these flat broken shards, I'm going to select my mask, and I'm going to take my mask and I'm going to go under liquify. And here it's kind of tricky. It says that we're kind of pushing the limits of this, and it's like, yep, I know. So now I'm using my mask to go in and liquefy. So this is what my mask looks like, okay? So I'm not actually doing this on the image. This is the mask. And I'm then going to further go in and use my pucker and bloat. And if I go in, and this is super intensive, folks. My hard drive is, you know, screaming right now. I can go in and I can set this. And I've clicked just a few too many times because I'm impatient. So I'm going to reset this here. This is where you have to go in and you have to be a little bit more patient with this. I actually have to cancel out of this and then go back in on my mask because I clicked too many times waiting for this to happen, okay? So I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna grab my pucker tool and a very large brush as well and I'm gonna click and I'm gonna be a little bit more patient this time and you see the, the process bar at the bottom here. So again, this is very labor intensive and I'm gonna pucker this in to go in and pull this in. Now remember, folks, this is my mask, okay? So this broken effect that I have on my mask is then going to control the shatter effect even more. And you get the idea here, and I'm going to click OK. Again, patience is key to this. I click OK. And that's going to take my mask. It takes a lot of rendering power here. It's got to work. It's got to think really hard. Go through. There it is. And now I've taken that shatter effect on my mask and gone even further. Back on my mask, I can go back to my original brush and just grab a soft round brush from the very top of my brush panel. And if I wanted to then blend this out even more, I could just paint with black and I could blend this out as well. Maybe control the opacity so I don't get that edge and create that really cool shatter effect. And because this is all one object, I could transform this as well, if I would like to move or transform all of this. If I do transform this, because I've got my Liquify Smart Filter on, it's going to tell me that the Smart Filter is going to be turned off for the time being. And then, of course, I can stretch and pull and move and rotate and scale this. I can even go in and I can warp this, which is going to be crazy. And I can't warp with a mask here. I have to unlink that mask in order to do it if you really want to create a dramatic effect. Okay? But I know this is getting, you know, 
pretty intensive in here, but I can warp, I can skew, distort, all of that, and create this kind of glass blast effect coming out at me. And this is pretty intense. There's a, there's a lot going on with this. I mean, to create this really dramatic shatter. And then, of course, you can set different blending modes if you want to go ahead and have the different blending modes happen. This is always a fun one here with the color dodge where you kind of create this kind of crystal effect. Of course, you can do your multiply, darken, and just run through some of your cool effects right here. If you want to create this really ice cold effect, linear light does a really cool effect on here. And that's one of the ways that you can do this really dramatic glass shatter on it. It's fun, it's interesting, and I always like pushing the uh, edge of this kind of stuff to really make it more dramatic. That's what I have for you folks.